Hello, lovely being here with you lovely people. Do we have fun at the Fringe? Yeah. yeah! I also have fun. It wasn't always like that in the UK for me as a German comedian. Um, three years ago it was quite different. Um, I did my first ever gig in the UK, in London, in the Comedy Cafe in Shortage. I was booked into a mixed show and the host, he got my name on a piece of paper on stage and he read it aloud and was like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, next performer, very, very special guest, please welcome on stage Michael McIntyre. <laughs> Yeah, it was like that. The crowd went mental. McIntyre, McIntyre. I knew Michael McIntyre as one of the most successful comedy stars in the UK. I was standing behind the curtain. Oh my God, McIntyre, McIntyre. German angst. Ever heard about it? I thought, what am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, do it like Michael McIntyre. Just walk up and down the stage. So, yeah, no. This was in my head. What was really happening was... <laughs> you know, when we Germans, when we are scared, we tend to walk like that. It's, no, it's not marching. It's stiff upper leg. It's, British have stiff upper lip, we have stiff upper leg. So, okay, imagine the situation. I was standing behind the curtain, the crowd, McIntyre, Mc. I walked on stage. Then I had the biggest blackout I ever had. I started my routine in German. Hallo, ich bin ein Comedian from Deutschland. The first I heard was, go home, Fritz. I felt so offended, personally, by being called Fritz. Because my middle name really is Fritz. And Michael Fritz Bittermeier, that's my full name. I never write it on posters outside of Germany. Yeah, because Fritz. It's the most fucked up German name you can have. <laughs> huh? Thank you, Father. Named after every dumb Nazi bad guy in those World War II action movies. There's always a Fritz. Fritz is the Nazi. The Nazi is always the Fritz. Fritzi is the Nazi. Always like that. And he's never smart, handsome, intelligent killer machine. No. <laughs> it's always moron Fritz. A human blackout. The bratwurst on legs. <laughs> <laughs> and he is always guarding the Nazi fortress or the Nazi bunker. Why? He sees nothing. He hears nothing like Andrea Bocelli in SS. So, and I love those movies. Where eagles there, for example. They always show them on Christmas. Where eagles there, you remember um, the plot. Richard Burton and Clint Eastwood and some cool allies, they want to break into a Nazi fortress in the Bavarian Alps and to rescue an American general. And guess who is standing guard? G -g 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 yes, me. <laughs> so, Fritz is here and just round the corner, Richard Burton and Clint Eastwood, they talk loudly. Hey, Clint, we're going to rescue the general. They don't even try to whisper. Oh, Richard, we should be more quiet. There is a guard standing. <laughs> this one has a handicap. Huh? He is a Fritz! Gubba, gubba. <laughs> and then they kill me every Christmas. <laughs> Do they know it? You know, when I was a small boy, I remember I once asked my mother, Mutter, why do we Germans never win in those movies? <laughs> Ask your grandpa, he lost the war. Ah, all these cliches, the Fritz cliche. Many Br British people here tonight, here? Yay. Scots, British, yeah. English, yay! Why are you here? Didn't you learn at school? Germans have no sense of humor. <laughs> huh? You learn this in school? Write it on the blackboard. Germ Germans have no sense of humor. At all? Yes, at all. At all. <laughs> Here in the UK, German comedian, I'm an oxymoron. Huh? <laughs> a funny German comedian would be like a Russian Human Rights Commission. <laughs> Americans here tonight? 
It's nice. They point to some guy here. He's American. <laughs> Thank you, Judas. But you know what? <laughs> I like Americans. <laughs> but I tell you a story, a true story from 2003 when I was in New York. And I tell this story since 2003 in every live show I do because it explains so much about America. So I was in a New York bar. And an American girl, she walked up to me and she asked me the following question. Hey, you German guy. Why are there so many different languages in Europe? <laughs> what to answer to such a highly extreme intelligent question? <laughs> and I said, look, Tiffany. You want to know why there are so many different languages in Europe? Because we Germans lost the war. <laughs> no, no, no. No, hey, don't applaud. You know what she answered to me? Oh, I'm so sorry for you guys. <laughs> and you know all this uproar in the, in the 60s and the 70s? A new awareness rose in German society. And in the 70s, I would say it was the beginning of the German guilt era. Because I was born in 1966. I'm part of the first post-post-war generation. When I came to school in 1972, they really overcompensated it by telling us everything about the Nazi history they never taught in the 50s, in the 60s. Every day we had, you're guilty, you're guilty, you're guilty, you're guilty. I had a school subject called guilt. <laughs> Three times a week we had guilt, on Fridays we had shame. <laughs> By the time I was 14, I thought I invaded Poland. <laughs> I was... <laughs> and also a true story, in schools and university later on in the 80s, they always told us, as a German, keep low profile when you go outside of Germany, because, yeah, why? Yeah, because, you know, guilt. Ah, was a, what did I do? You know, I was a teenager. I was like, huh? And it was, keep low profile, don't attract attention. Thank you, with this language I have. <laughs> I was a teenager on Interrail, standing in Paris, asking for the main train station. Guten Tag, könnten Sie bitte sagen, wo der Hauptbahnhof ist? Everybody goes down on the floor, a German marching order to Russia. Hey, isn't it weird? We Germans criticize everyone for going to war. We didn't go to Iraq. We like, eh, don't go to Iraq. We, no, Russia. Eh, it's bad. But, you know, it's kind of, we can say to the Russians, don't shoot the Ukraine people with our weapons and tanks. That's not good. That's not good. Because we sell weapons to everyone. <laughs> you know, Germany is the world's third biggest arms dealer. And Germany is the world's biggest tank builder and supplier. The whole world loves buying our tanks and weapons. Huh? My theory is everyone feels safer if we don't keep them. Hmm? But we Germans, we always try to be political correct. That's one of the stereotypes which is really true. We Germans, the correctness. We are born with this. The Germans, it's really correctness. It flows in our veins. We, it's ingrained in my brain. It's, yeah, I cannot escape. And if, you know, being a German and a comedian, that's hard. Because as a comedian, I try to be funny. But as a German, I always try to give a correct answer. <laughs> this combination can be tricky. Um, 2003, when I landed in New York, JFK Airport, I was standing at US Immigration. By the way, never try to be funny at US Immigration. <laughs> So I was standing there, I was, oh, I'm gonna be six months in New York. So I was really, woo, 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 woo. So two customs officers, they took me aside. Sir, you're using drugs, sir. You have drugs on you, sir. Uh, no, no, sir, no, I, I, I don't. I can tell by your eyes, huh? Look at your eyes. I answer correctly. I cannot look at my eyes because I would have to take them out, turn them around, but then they see empty holes. He was not amused, so. He shouted at me, I can tell by your eyes, your pupils are small, you use cocaine. 
I should have just said no. But the correct inner comedian in me answered, Sir, you know, cocaine makes pupils bigger. Only if you smoke pot, the pupils get small. <laughs> You remember when a teacher wasn't even shouting anymore? Just looking at you very, very seriously? Who do you think you are? <laughs> Correctly, I said, I'm a comedian. <laughs> Then why am I not laughing? I'm a German comedian. That was a good one! <laughs> And you know, the, the correct German in me is always fighting with the Bavarian in me. You sind Bavarian, southern part of Germany. We Bavarians, we're very rural people, very Catholic, fundamentalistic people. Uh, for us, Texas is a gay country. <laughs> uh, British people are impressed, really. Uh, you know, and we Bavarians, um, we are the guys with the Lederhosen. It's not the Germans. In Bavaria, Lederhosen would be like the kilt in Scotland, Scottish people, because you, you, if you look at the kilt here in Scotland, all they have different patterns, the tartan patterns, and it's the same with our lederhosen. Every lederhosen has a different stitching. So I look at the lederhosen, I know this guy's from this village, from this area. So it's kind of a lederhosen in Bavaria, it's really, that's tradition. And I got my lederhosen from my grandfather, because you, you cannot destroy lederhosen, it's kind of It's like a garment tank. You, you cannot destroy a lederhosen. So, and you know, lederhosen, he got this lederhosen from his grandfather. So lederhosen in Bavaria, they are passed on through generations. The DNA of generations is in those lederhosen. Uh, imagine CSI Munich. <laughs> They found a dead Bavarian body in lederhosen. Any idea who did it? We've run DNA on the victim's lederhosen. <laughs> Results. <laughs> He was killed at least by 16 different people, most of them related, and they all pissed on him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we Bavarians, sometimes we can be a bit rougher on the edges. No wonder we invented the first state run mass blackout in history, Oktoberfest. Every year, 6.5 million people come to Munich, shoot their lights out. Huh? And you know, that's my culture. It's not a tourist attraction. I remember when I was six years old, my grandmother took me to the Oktoberfest, first time. And for the first time in my life, I saw people from foreign countries. It was like, whoa, strangers were running up to me friendly. <laughs> I thought, oh, it's a greeting ritual. <laughs> Greeting rituals are important. They reflect a nation. Huh? Unlike Americans, they're always friendly, but they have a greeting disorder. <laughs> Because every time when I get introduced to American people as a German, they always react the same by shouting at me. Some German words they picked up somehow randomly. Oktoberfest, guten Tag, mein Fräulein, Blitzkrieg, du will ficken. <laughs> Original line. And I always thought, okay, be prepared when the Americans come back. So I trained for years. And after years, I was ready. At the Oktoberfest, I walked up to a group of Americans. La, 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 la. One of them turned to me, hey, hello! We're from America! Mickey Mouse, 9-11, Hamburger, Guantanamo, yippee yay motherfucker! <laughs> you know the most polite greeting people on the planet? Japanese people. Japanese people here tonight? Yeah, well... <laughs> I love when you greet people. It's always, it's so respectful. It's just, konnichiwa. <laughs> No, sorry, you feel so respected. It's not like, hello. You always, it's, a, it's like you're so interested in everything. But you can say what you want. I'm from Germany. 
I have sex with dogs. Whoa. <laughs> Same reaction. Are you alone here? No. <laughs> She's alone with Scottish friends, I would say. <laughs> because normally Japanese people never walk alone. Did you ever see a Japanese tourist running around alone? Never, never. They always come in groups and, and even the groups come in groups. And you know, and the big group is not coming alone. In front of the big group, there is always a guide with a flag and they all look flag follow. Big group of Japanese people in front of the group, there is always a guide with a flag leading the way and they all follow him. That's what we Germans tried, didn't work out. <laughs> so, yeah. It's also Japanese people like Germans is like a hive mentality, but the Japanese, they are the polite pork. They don't assimilate, they just take pictures and then they leave the planet. <laughs> but it's really, it's, it, it, but it's really, it's so funny to see when at the Oktoberfest a group of Japanese and a guy with a flag and they all do everything what he's doing. The flag master going to the left. You're going to the right. I once saw a group of Japanese. The flag master sneezed. The whole group was standing there. <laughs> Few years ago, my wife and I we, <laughs> we were at the Ayers Rock in Australia. There is a small airport nearby, uh, two gates. On the left gate, we waited for our flight to Sydney. On the right, at the right gate, a big group of Japanese people, and they went to their plane, and the plane took off. So, a few minutes later, one of them came back from the toilet. <laughs> Too late, they had forgotten him. And I will never forget the look on his face when he came out of the toilet. You know, we Germans, when we scared, we tend to walk like that. Japanese people, when they're scared, they're more like. So he was circling around. Then our flight was announced. We were boarding, and he was following me. <laughs> okay, might have been because from a handkerchief, I've made a little flag. <laughs> I brought him to Sydney. I never saw him again in my life. Man. Yeah. I know, drunk decorating. It's a bachelor in British University. And I never will ask again. The first two days, I asked, what do you do here in the UK uh, by decorating drunks? It went on for minutes. We draw a dick on his face, we throw trash on him, we fuck him. It went on. You know, we... <laughs> no, we Germans, we don't do stuff like that. We are scientists. <laughs> and I'll tell you a science story. I was 18, 19. Um, I was abducted by aliens after eclipsing on Bavarian beer. Okay, I really blacked out. So my friends thought, okay, let's do an experiment in three phases. So, phase one, they smeared mustard on my glasses. Phase two, they unscrewed the light bulb in the toilet so it would stay dark. Phase three, they opened up my zipper and put a bratwurst inside. <laughs> what a sophisticated setup. What groundbreaking pioneering results were they expecting? As follows, Michael wakes up. I don't see anything, I wipe my glasses. Uh, take them off, I go to the toilet, some light. Uh, dark, okay, without the light. Oh, zipper is open already. Oh, it's out already. So while I was standing there holding a sausage in my hand and peeing my pants. Uh, excuse me, can I switch it off now? 
Yes. 